All right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started. So thank you for coming tonight, all of you who are here already and those who are soon coming in. We are glad that you are here at the March meeting of the Multi-Faith Network for Climate Justice. And we are excited about the evening. We look forward to what each of us has to contribute tonight, as well as what we can each learn and grow from. And uh, a couple of just housekeeping things related to the technology. Uh, most of the evening, we're going to be hoping that you'll be able to keep yourself on mute. And uh, it's just possible that if that slips your mind, we might um, take over and mute for you. So just be alert to that. And then um, also it's possible with technology that anybody at any time might drop out and disappear. There might be an internet blip or something. So if that happens, we'll just roll with it, keep going. Um, we can switch around as we need to um, among the presenters tonight, but uh, hopefully we'll have some solid connections. And I think uh, people-wise we'll have solid connections anyway. So thank you for um, working with all the technology. It's, uh, as Linda was pointing out just a minute ago, a little different than person to person uh, meeting face-to-face, -face, um, three dimensions instead of two dimensions, but it's uh, still good to have you and um, and the people connection is there. Wanted to um, also just give an overview of the evening briefly. We'll be starting with these introductory remarks and a land acknowledgement, and then we'll have some opening remarks from Michael Carlberg. Um, sharing uh, kind of a centering grounding for us for the evening. And then there'll be a, a time of sharing. Um, we're hoping hoping still that uh, Representative Deborah McCannoff and Senator Liz Lovelett for the state will be here to share with us on some of the uh, events and activities that may be especially pertinent to this group tonight. And then uh, at the end, there'll be a time of closing and uh, contemplation reflection, as well as some brief announcements. In the discussion portion, there'll be an opportunity perhaps to add some questions in the chat. Uh, so we ask that you do it that way, just a preview um, once we get to that point in the evening. And in the meantime, um, we're thankful that you're here. So by way of land acknowledgement, I'd like to uh, go ahead and read um, land acknowledgement. As we meet tonight, we acknowledge together that many of us meet together and reside on the ancestral homelands of the Coast Salish peoples, that of the Lummi Nation and the Nooksack Nation, who have lived in and cultivated a close relationship with this fertile and abundant environment in the Salish Sea Basin from ancient times and up through the present. We express deep respect and gratitude for these neighbors and for other families that have shared these ancestral homelands and bodies of water in the areas of Whatcom County and the Salish Sea for their great efforts and sacrifices. And we support efforts to work together to achieve equitable and sustainable ways of living in this area, on this planet, and in this interconnected universe. We are grateful and privileged to be able to live, learn, and share together today in the surroundings of this place that remains imbued with their presence throughout. At this point, I'd like to introduce our friend, Michael Carlberg, who is here with us tonight and is going to be uh, a big part of our launching point for the evening. Uh, Michael is a member of the local spiritual assembly of the Baha'i of Bellingham, and they are an elected body that guides the affairs of the local Baha'i community. Baha'i elections have no competition nominations or campaigning. So service on the local spiritual assembly is not sought. Rather, individuals serve at the bidding of the community. <laughs> Michael is also a professor at Western Washington University with a focus on peace and justice studies. He has authored books, including Beyond the Culture of Contest and Constructing Social Reality. He also developed the Bellingham Racial History website. So uh, if you're just joining in, encourage you to mute yourself if you're not already muted. And Michael, I wanna turn it over to you for your opening, thank you. Uh, thanks, Brian. And thanks everyone for inviting me to offer an opening um, 
prayer or meditation and share a few words about the Baha'i New Year, which I was asked to do. So I'll begin with a prayer that was penned by Abdul Baha, who was the eldest son of Baha'u'llah, who was the founder of the Baha'i faith. And Baha'is consider Abdul Baha the sort of perfect exemplar of Baha'i teachings. And uh, a little background on this prayer. In 1912, Abdul Baha traveled throughout the United States and delivered a lot of public talks on the challenges facing uh, this country and the world at that time. And in one of those talks, he, he discussed the latent potentialities of the human spirit and the need to train and cultivate ourselves so that our potential can become manifest and our full capacities can be directed towards the betterment of the world. And at the end of that particular talk, he offered this prayer, which also seems fitting for this occasion. O oh, thou kind Lord, these are, these are thy servants who have gathered in this meeting, have turned unto thy kingdom and are in need of thy bestowal and blessing. O oh, thou God, manifest and make evident the signs of thy oneness, which have been deposited in all the realities of life. Reveal and unfold the virtues which thou hast made latent and concealed in these human realities. O oh God, we are as plants, and thy bounty is as the rain. Refresh and cause these plants to grow through thy bestowal. We are thy servants. Free us from the fetters of material existence. We are ignorant. Make us wise. We are dead. Make us alive. We are material. Endow us with spirit. We are deprived. Make us the intimates of thy mysteries. We are needy, enrich and bless us from thy boundless treasury. O God, resuscitate us, give us sight, give us hearing, familiarize us with the mysteries of life so that the secrets of thy kingdom may become revealed to us in this world of existence and we may confess thy oneness. Every bestowal emanates from thee, every benediction is thine. Thou art the mighty, thou art powerful, thou art the giver, and thou art the ever bounteous. So I was also asked to say a few words about the Baha'i New Year, which falls on the spring equinox, which as you all know, just occurred a few days ago. Um, so for Baha'is, the New Year celebration follows a period of fasting for 19 days uh, with no food or drink during daylight hours leading up to the equinox. And it's a period of spiritual discipline and reflection. I'm sure many of you are familiar with fasting, as well as a period in which we experience some of the hunger that so many people still experience on this planet due to the many social injustices we're all still working to overcome. So this 19 day fast ends then with the new year on the equinox, which is a symbol of spiritual renewal and a time to rededicate ourselves to the work of building a more peaceful and just world. And immediately following the new year, Baha'is enter into the month of Baha on our calendar which means splendor or glory or light, loosely translated. And this is the first of 19 months in the Baha'i calendar, each of which is named after an attribute of God. And at the beginning of each month, we hold a feast where we come together to pray, to consult on the efforts of the community and strengthen our bonds of fellowship. And these gatherings are part of the basic rhythm of Baha'i life. Um, and much of our work, like all of you, is directed towards really addressing the challenges of the age we live in, which range from the struggle for racial justice in countries like the United States to the struggle for climate justice all around the planet. And uh, I'm happy to be here with you tonight again as we focus on the latter, climate justice. So thank you. Thank you for the gift of that opening prayer and those thoughts. 
Uh, we appreciate you being with us tonight, Michael. We want to uh, give an opportunity this evening for uh, presentation and um, I'll just talk a little bit about what we have loosely constructed as an idea of a uh, discussion for the evening. We've heard a great deal <clears throat> recently about uh, the HEAL Healthy Environment for All Act and the Washington Strong Act and their importance to the environment and to affected marginalized communities. So tonight, one of the ideas we wanted to explore the questions is what does this really mean? What conditions prompted the creation of these two pieces of legislation and how will they or how could they address the conditions that have made them necessary? And so uh, we're expecting Rep Representative Deborah Lakanoff and Senator Liz Lovelett uh, will be addressing these and questions around the complex and sometimes controversial issues of environmental justice in the state of Washington. Um, do we have uh, Representative Deborah Lakanoff with us yet? Does anybody know? I don't see either of them. Okay. Deb, do you I want just, to... I just texted them and I just emailed their aides, so. Okay. Um, do you want to speak a little bit about your uh, connection to them or what you know about them already? <laughs> Other, other than that, they're, they're real go-getters on the legislative issue and quite the handful. I can't imagine being um, uh, opposing them <laughs> for any reason. Um, they are great ladies. And just for maybe some introductory, I'm looking for my stuff here. Um, as far as I, maybe I can start with some some introduction to the HEAL Act and if there are some folks who maybe want to chime in if they have some knowledge of what the HEAL Act is as well. Um, the HEAL Act is uh, engrossed House Senate Bill 5141 and it addresses three intersections of justice issues framing the environmental crisis in terms of health and, and the state of marginalized communities. Um, and it recognizes that the marginalized communities carry a disproportionate burden of environmental health issues. The HEAL Act is coming off of the recommendations of the Environmental Justice Task Force. They have developed a health disparities map. And I don't know, has, has anybody seen what that map looks like? Basically it was drafted up by the um, Department of Health and it's an actual map that shows the significant areas or the different areas and how they impact um, where the environmental issues are, are more significant and outlines where, where those are and generally how they uh, impact uh, lower income communities and communities of color. The is, I'm gonna give you, put the link to the report in the chat box. So if anybody wants to go in and take a look at it. Um, and I guess I can, sh so if anybody sees either one of them show up, that would be great or look for Kaylee or Jordan, their aides. Um, I'm trying to see population, sensitive populations, rankings. So what I can do is I can screen share at least part of the report.
So this is coming off of the Health Disparities Acts, and this is the, the color coding for what the, the map is going to reflect. So you have 10% of the communities down here and for the least impacted in the blue and the most impacted in, in the reddish colors. And what we do is we scroll down here and we're gonna go into the map and I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna make this smaller, but you can see, oh, there we go. You can see where they've identified areas. Up here, I'm going to assume this, this is up in Lummi territory, mm. up here. And then all along down in these areas right here. And I don't have a map overlay, so I'm not sure where exactly this is gonna be a lot in, in Seattle. And I would assume this is Olympia down here. And this would probably be Yakima territory, I think. Um, but this shows you where the, the more significant impacts are and then the report goes on to talk about different health indicators and how they came up with the studies. The act requires or will be establishing a standardized definition of what environmental justice is. And that was the quote that was on the flyer. And I'm not sure if they have that definition straight up front on, you can go into, uh, stop. Uh, and if you guys haven't done this before, <laughs> you're gonna get a crash course in how to use the, the website. So we're gonna go in here. All right, so this is the, the bill analysis. Did, it, did either of them show up yet? Another. Okay. Okay, so the, the bill requires that Puget Sound Partnership and the Departments of Agriculture, Commerce, Ecology, Health, Natural Resources and Transportations to complete assessments and on and on, but I'm looking for, here we go. Here is, this is important because it, it gives a standard definition that uh, these de departments in particular um, will be using. So the United States Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA defines environmental justice as the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin, or income with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. And it goes on to explain a number of things um, and to put forward at least some of the recommendations that came out of the environmental justice <coughs> um, uh, task force. Um, so, and I will put this, well, you don't need this. You can probably go find this yourselves um, on Legislat Wall, unless somebody wants me to put that link in. I, I'll do this. And right now, it's made it out of, it's very close to passing, very close. Um, it's gone through its uh, committee assignment in the house and we're just waiting for the executive session which takes place tomorrow where they decide whether or not it's gonna go to the house floor for a vote. So that's gonna be real soon. Now the HEAL Act, which is um, 5373 has to do with bonds, green recovery bonds, where um, the funds will be 
perhaps recycled back into or funneled into some of these health disparity areas um, to help raise the funds to, to, to clean up and um, address some of the issues in, the, in those areas. And it's a lot more complicated. It's not a bill per se anymore. From last I heard, it's gone in through as a budget proviso. So I'm not sure what the status of that is. And that would be something that uh, Deborah Lakanoff would, would address because I don't know how that part of the legislature works. Um, so I'm gonna take that off. So I think that I'm looking for, there's a lot of different definitions. Um, say the fight for environmental justice I haven't heard from either one of them. Okay. Front. Oh, oh my God. So sorry. Let's see. Okay. So, <laughs> Jordan, shame on you. Sir. Okay. So, Liz may be here in a couple of minutes. I just got a text from her aide. And is Deborah here yet? No, uh-uh. All right, so I haven't heard from Kaylee either. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Deb, yeah. it's, it's really common that this happens during the legislative session. You probably yeah. know that. Yeah. Uh, I've had legislators come to classes before. They've in all their good intentions, they have a very yeah. hard time during the session. Yep. Um, let's see. Here, yeah. And I just heard from Kaylee and she says, Oh, that sounds good. I hope it's going well. Well, kind of not because she's not here <laughs> all right unless she snuck in while i wasn't looking not yet okay so i guess we can is there anybody else who maybe has a little more insight on either one i know 5141 was drafted with the help of front and centered which is a bipoc um uh, co a coalition of BIPOC organizations had direct um, involvement in the drafting of that legislation so that's a really key in, in, key factor in this and um i believe front and centered uh, became involved in the later stages or after the development and endorsed 5373, which is the strong act. And uh, those are important. I, okay, so I BIPOC is, oh, there she is, yay! Deborah. Sorry, I've been stuck on another reading and I just got out of that one and then I couldn't get into yours, then I had to register. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 and I just... I just jumped out of my car, taking another meeting, trying to get my dog out for a walk. So you guys get a full force, work in progress, mom, got to take care of the dog, getting off of Zoom and working on a bill, and now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you need to take five minutes to breathe? I'm so happy to be here. I'm good. It's a beautiful, cool spring, um, spring evening in the Skagit. The tide is out. I had a great day in session today. So no, I'm, I am happy to end my day with you guys before I have to get to work on a couple other things. Cool. Grateful Thank you're you. here. So much lady, appreciate it a lot. So did, did Kaylee explain to you what we were expecting from you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I, was just, I was just listening to your conversation. I walked into your conversation um, about the HEAL Act in Washington Strong and I'm happy to brief you on the heel and then Washington Strong afterwards, if that, that works. Would be, that would be great. Okay, all right. So the heel Act started uh, several years ago and it was the work of front and centered at that time. And many of you may have remembered ICO. 
Uh, I feel we uh, came out of the Asian American community and was really an incredible leader that brought over 80 environmental organizations together to talk about the importance of providing a healthy environment for all. Now, the HEAL Act was able to create underneath an organization a, a disparities map, which lays over the entire state of Washington. And what that map did is it provided a layout of all the most vulnerable communities. And then you layer on top of that the environmental degradation. And we found that a majority of your minority community members were living in poorly, poor environmental um, con poor environmental conditions. Well, those of us who know, the first thing you've got to do if you're going to create policy is show the data. And this showed the data. The Environmental Health Care for All then created the HEAL Act, which Representative Reeves, Representative Gregerson, Representative Dolion, and I worked on with representatives on the Republican side, Representative Kretz, Steele, Arcus, and DeBolt. We passed that bill off of the House floor in bipartisanship because the Republicans and the Democrats both felt whether you were living in the air quality of climate change um, fires in Eastern Washington, in the Ferry and Stevens County, or whether you were living from the environmental degradation of clean air in Tacoma, our communities, rural communities and vulnerable communities were were being impacted. Unfortunately, the Senate was not ready to lift up the HEAL Act just yet. Um, under the incredible leadership of Senator Saldana, they just hadn't gotten there. So what we did is we created a proviso. We did a task force. All the agencies sat down and said, how do we incorporate a healthy environment for all within our programs, within our budgets, and within our agencies? And we started developing a framework on that analysis. So say for instance, in Department of Commerce, we're to sit down in housing. Well, how do we incorporate healthy, affordable housing for vulnerable communities that are facing the highest streamline of environmental impacts? Let's take, and those of you may not know, but if you do, um, be patient with me, but underneath Tacoma, Tacoma has the largest, um, vulnerable community that deals with the worst air, clean air impacts because of, um, of course, the airport and then because of congestion, uh, uh, transportation, um, cars. And so what we're able to do is, and this is just an example, um, the Department of Commerce underneath the housing program would then look at developing affordable housing, those areas built out of green infrastructure. They would look at the transportation of buses and then they would also identify that the school systems there need an upgrade in their HVAC systems, which is their air ventilation systems, as does many of our businesses and organizations that employ our vulnerable communities. So this is the type of work that the HEAL Act does. Now it's 2021. Rebecca has done an extraordinary job with front and centered leading this, leading this war. No, let's not call it a war. Leading this incredible victory of incorporating environmental integrity within the agency's work across, across, the, uh, across the governor's cabinet. They're lining out priority agencies to phase this in. Um, it's hard for a community of color to say, why, <laughs> why not just do it? Like, just flip the switch and do it. You're like, we've been waiting long enough, now come on. But financially why this is a huge lift for our agencies. It's gonna take analysis, it's gonna take building programs, it's gonna take money, it's also gonna have, a, um, it needs to collaborate with the Office of Equity. So that's the HEAL Act. So I'll stop there because that was a whole lot to absorb and see if um, you have any questions or any thoughts. I know, Deb, sometimes I make people speechless. Maybe it's you and me. Both Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there yeah, any questions, you guys? Okay, go ahead, Betsy. Uh, Representative McCannoff, is this the bill that you were referring to earlier that you said just has a, has a high likelihood of passing? 
It does. It has it has the support of the governor. However, um, this bill is also tied to the cap and invest program, which if it doesn't pass, it has uh, it it just shows a little bit of hmm, maybe maybe if maybe if it doesn't pass under the cap and invest, what do we do? Don't get caught up in the drama. Take a look at uh, and Deb, if you have it, make sure they get the bill number. Take a look at Representative Saldana's bill and just grab it and send as much advocacy in for it as you possibly can. And I'm sorry, Deb, I don't have the heel numbers, uh, the um, Senate number. The 5141. There we go. Yeah, we just popped online a minute ago and did a real quick look at the the analysis on it. It's a great, so, okay, it's uh, a great it's a great little bill. It's going to get us kicked off in the right way. Linda, did you have a question? You have to unmute, dear. I'm wondering, and that is, if we if let's uh, say that the bill passes. What what then? Uh, once the bill passes within the bill, they've allocated specific agencies to start kicking off how to incorporate that heal the disparities map and the disparities um, programs. How do we incorporate healthy care for all within those agencies? So Department of Health is listed there, De uh, Department of Commerce for housing. Um, there's a few others that are listed that they'll follow and they'll phase them in into those vulnerable communities. Right now, everything would go to King County because the majority of your community, majority of your districts are King County representatives. And it's not to say that King County doesn't deserve it because they have a huge amount of uh, communities uh, that are living in disparity because of um, the environment. But the, um, but there are those in rural communities that are also face, facing the same type of detrimental impact. You know, right now, if we had this in place, you know, the dream would be Department of Health would take a look at the vaccinations distribution. They would notice that in the Skagit, 40% of my communities is migrant farm workers. They're essential workers. They should be receiving vaccinations and therefore we should be distributing it to those communities that have the most vulnerable um, populations and they are in, uh, in desperate need as essential workers. But that was in the perfect world if this was already incorporated three years ago when it first passed the house. Claire, did you have a question? Where are you? I, I do. can't see you. Thank you. Screens. Yes. Hi, um, I have a question about, uh, is, this, is this effort being coordinated or how, what, what state agency or, or department would be looking at how climate change uh, initiatives are impacted or would impact this, uh, this initiative? Um, the governor passed last year, the Office of Equity that is just getting off the ground to be able to look at if you're gonna incorporate climate change policy across the state, how would it involve um, equity? Um, however, they're just getting started. So right now the Department of Ecology is working on incorporating this. Um, you also have the DNR has got a climate change program. WFW has got a climate change program. So when it comes to just strictly addressing climate change, like, you know, how are we going to incorporate, say you're looking at House Bill 1099. Are you guys aware of House Bill 1099 where they're incorporating clean energy and energy emission projects into urban areas? And the, yeah, so, the Growth Management Act, yeah. That's a, Yep. It's a growth management act bill. So yep. the gentleman that asked that question, like, well, how do you incorporate racial equity and diversity into that bill that's predominantly in King County and knowing that a majority of our vulnerable communities don't have money to buy electrical cars. They don't have the money to put plug-ins in their apartments or their houses that they're renting. And more than likely they take the bus or they live within walking distance of their work. Um, those are the type of questions where uh, the Office of Equity, the Department of Ecology would sit down and Department of Transportation and say, let's look at 1099 and how are we really looking at incorporating um, equity and diversity into this bill that affects vulnerable communities that are facing environmental um, living conditions. 
I hope I was helpful. I hope I was helpful. I did confuse you guys even more. But you guys have to remember, like, but this is but this is a work in progress. So there, that, did you have more? Did you it, uh, did you have you look like you wanted to ask something else? Are you done with your question, Claire? I did have another one. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, particularly perplexed about how housing issues are addressed in the face of climate change and, and the impacts, the, the pressures it puts on housing is, am I to understand this office of equity would be looking at those issues also? It would be looking at that, but then it would work, the office of equity would, in, would work with Department of Commerce to incorporate what climate change would look like on the face of housing impacts. Um, Department of Ecology would also have to look at it because they have to measure in climate change if the focal point of the governor is to reduce carbon emissions. If that is the full, full point, and that's why the biggest top bills is a cap and invest and a cap and invest and a um, clean fuel standards. The governor's approach to reducing to addressing climate change is reducing carbon emissions. And then he is incorporating the state energy. Uh, the state energy plan. If this is the governor's approach and what he's doing, what he's he's planning to do for climate change, then the next layer is how are the agencies going to then incorporate it? So it, it is a perplexing situation, but that's what happens when you're running behind the eight ball and this should have been done 20 years ago. You know, we're dealing with it now. We're incorporating plans as best as we can. The wonderful part though is the incredible part of the state legislature on passing these bills right now is you've got 19 people of color and people coming from diverse communities working in the state legislature, passing bills. And our bills did not look like they do today, 20 years ago, yep. not even 10 years ago. And I think we have to celebrate that. It's not gonna happen overnight, my friend, but it's a start. And sometimes you have to start somewhere and this is where we're starting. I would like to say though, rather than allocating money for the best bang for the buck. Now you're starting to allocate money on where it's really gonna start impacting communities and start making a change for those environmentally stressed places. When we talk about how does climate change impact housing, working with the Washington State Science Academy, we had to understand if we're gonna build something, how does that building reduce carbon emissions? Are we gonna to continue to build gray and do business as usual? Like we have been in allocating money for transportation and capital facilities projects and building the state of Washington's buildings green, not green, gray? Or are we gonna start phasing out building gray and building green because every building that goes up if it's built with green infrastructure, starts to reduce carbon emissions by 35%. So imagine, I mean, the thought is here for me as a Native American, I'm almost thinking generations from now. God knows climate change and earth can't wait generations from now. But I have to have faith that this investment now 10 years from now, will Washington State just automatically build green? Well, we have to sign some place that shows us that we're really reducing carbon emissions. Is the salmon going to return? Or are we going to have cool and clean water? Because are we going to have jobs? Is our workforce going to start changing? I got to have hope, Deb, and that's what I'm hoping for. So did they, do they have any particular, do they already have their eyes on particular areas? You mentioned Tacoma and air quality, and then you, you, you spoke about COVID and, and migrant, the migrant workers, the migrant farm workers. Are there any others, have they identified any other top priority kinds of things that, they'll, that they're gonna be looking at? I think one of the best next steps for all of you is to go to the Front and Centered website and take a look at it. It has the energy, and then take a look at the governor's state energy plan. Um, right now, we just have to get the bill passed through, mm -hmm. and then the implementation to answer your questions will begin. There's okay. a framework under front of center. There's a framework under um, the governor's uh, a state energy plan. There are areas in which we can implement it, but to be able to say the plan's perfect and we've got this uh, is too soon to say. Pass the bill, then go into the rulemaking to implement the bill. And that rulemaking will come out of Department of Ecology. So are there any other questions on the HEAL Act before we have her do a recap of um, the STRONG Act? 
I have to click between two screens. So, um, Deb, I yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to um, add one more. Well, I was actually talking to Deb Cruz, but both of you are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Kathy. Um, I one of the things that surprised me that I that I would like to, um, uh, folks to know is that for every committee and please help me with this, for every time this bill moves to a new committee, you can sign in again in support of the legislation. So you may have signed in once, but once it moves to the next step, you can sign in again. So is that correct? And is that something we need to be making sure we do? Oh my gosh, you guys, sign in to every, every hearing you have as a yes. Follow, follow the path, follow the breadcrumbs. Sign in yes and flood their emails with yes. Because what, what happens is right now, we'd be tracking how many visits we get and how many people we talk to. And then it goes back and leadership's going to say, huh, you visited with over 300 people today that came to the Hill that talked about the Heal Act. But because we're not on the Hill any longer, you're going to have to do everything by... We're gonna to have to do everything by, um, sorry. You're gonna to have to do everything by, um, by email. So Kaylee, don't tell Kaylee and Jordan this because they're not the ones who are no, doing yeah, it. I think Kaylee's on the call, so be careful. <laughs> but if you, if you all flood Senator Saldana's um, and Joe Fitzgibbon's emails that say, yes, support it. Those emails are tracked and the, the, the LAs will send that into communications who sends it up to leadership. And it'll say for that week, we've received, you know, of 100%, 20% of it was really focused on the HEAL Act. Stakeholders are really talking and citizens are really talking. Like this is, a, this is an important bill. So your guys' continuous outreach really does make a difference. Um, your voices matter. So it's, it's good for you to continue to send your emails in, um, get more stakeholders to do it in a really targeted and strategic manner. Get some op-eds out there. If you guys have an ability to do social media or to do op-eds, that really makes a big difference. Um, and then sign into your committees and vote, vote yes for both the HEAL Act and the Washington Strong. Any other questions for the HEAL so we can have Deborah do a quick synopsis of 5373 and then get on with the rest of her evening. I don't see any other, I don't see any other questions. So if you wanna quickly do a rundown on 5373, which is the strong act and kind of explain uh, what the-, the Okay, I was excited is. about the HEAL Act. Huh? Yeah. Well, I was, I was excited about the HEAL Act, but now you guys get to hear me really excited about the Washington <laughs> Strong Act. So all of you know, Senator Lovelett and Sharon Shoemaker and I have worked our butts off on this bill. We have stakeholdered it. We've met with the, the truckers. We've met with the supply chains. We've met with agriculture. We've met with refineries. We've met with an enormous citizens. And we know the Washington Strong Act really is reflecting what the voices of this state needs right now in policy. It is, it is a carbon reducing emissions bill that incorporates economic revenue building through a green special tax obligation bond, allocates 60% 60, 60 of the money that comes out of the bond to transportation. So transportation can resolve and catch up on their issues and they have to do it green. 40% goes towards the state, goes towards green infrastructure, I'm sorry, climate resilience and, and climate mitigation, which could mean green infrastructure, green buildings, stormwater treatment plants, um, public water wastewater treatment plants, broadband, forest management, floodplain by design, salmon investment, culverts. If you mitigate climate change and build it green, it helps reduce climate emissions. Go back to my 35% uh, of reduction in carbon emissions when you build green. Right now, the Senate has, uh, Senate's had a hearing. Liz needs all of our help getting it out. As if you guys could like, if we could partner with front and center who's been at the table at the very beginning. Front and center was at the table helping us move this through before Washington Environmental Council was there. 
that's how committed front and center the communities of color are to Washington Shaw, because they know when we invest in Washington State, we are investing in their communities, we're investing in rural communities, we're building green infrastructure, we're building green transit, green ferry systems, we're reducing carbon emissions, and we're bringing everyone along with us. So right now the Senate has it, um, Carlisle has it stuck in environmental and energy because we know the primary focus is another carbon uh, pricing bill. But the more you guys can email him, Senator Billig, Senator Rofus, Senator Doss, every Senator, Senator Leas, Lieutenant Governor Heck, flood their emails and grab all your friends because the over thousand people who signed in rocked the Senate's world. They were not expecting that. Whereas the Capital Invest only got 18 people to sign. In. So Liz needs our help. Um, we already have got a commitment on the House side because we had so many communities of color representatives sign on to the bill. We are ready to catch Senator Lovelace's bill in the House. We would then need to run it through to get it to the floor. So Deb, you might remember the process. We've got to get it out of the House, get it into the Ways and Means, get it off of the Ways, get it out of the Ways and Means Committee, get it onto the Senate floor, pass it on the Senate floor, throw it over to the House, hear it in the environmental energy, hear it in appropriations, and hear it on the House floor. Then go into conference, and then the bill gets pushed through. So it's got a ways to go. And policy cutoff is a, Kaylee, is it the 12th? So Washington Strong is not subject to policy cutoff. That's right. It's because it's a budget bill. So we got till, yep. I don't even know when we end, Deb. But as I have Kaylee. <laughs> session. And it so could, Kaylee, I mean, we could get it through. Go ahead. Okay, so Kaylee, can you make up a list of those people that she just ran off so we know who to... I can't. She went through those names really fast. That's okay. That's okay, Deb. If you if you guys get a hold of Jordan over in Senator Lovelace's office, okay. Deb, he will send okay. you. He's leading that strategy for Senator um, Senator Lovelace. He's got it all set up. He'll have language that he can help you with. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. Because okay. we. Yeah. I'll get with Jordan tonight then, and and get that information so we can get it out to the rest of the group. That'd be great. Yeah, it wouldn't be. So does anybody have any questions on the strong act? There's a lot of people with their videos off, so I can't tell. You're going to have to holler if you have any questions. Uh, Betsy, go ahead. Uh, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to pose it anyway. Um, is the state strong act bill tied in any way to the uh, federal stimulus bill and the billions of dollars that are being uh, designated for uh, um, climate change um, funding Perfect question. Coming, coming to the states. So we've collaborated and we've met with Senator Murray, Senator, Senator Murray, Senator Cantwell, who are tracking and watching this bill. We started early on and we've connected to Representative or Congressman Larson they are all watching this bill because they know if we can set this up on our end, that opens up the door for us to be able to receive the infrastructure money that comes through on the other end. So long story short, Betsy, yes, we're collaborating with them. Awesome. But, does his, but does his bill, does the infrastructure bill actually say, uh, <laughs> we're going to recognize Washington strong? It, it doesn't, Betsy, but we're collecting to make sure our language and our bills are all streamlined together. So they can, when we get our accounts set up and the money comes down, we're ahead of other states because we're already doing this. I felt bad for you, Deb, when you said all your videos are shut off. I was like, I better turn on my videos so she can see me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got a gorgeous evening there for a walk. That's amazing. Yes. It's, uh, I needed it. It was a long day. Oh, bet it was. And you've got, you've got, you're going to be running full steam up until what is it? April 25th. <laughs> it's a Sunday this year, if you can believe that. <laughs> hang, hang in, hang in there, lady. It's, it's almost time for a breather. <laughs> well, I got Kaylee. I can't do this without Kaylee. So she's my partner. She's my twin. <laughs> so wave Kaylee so everybody can see. 
who you see, uh, this is a uh, uh, Deborah's legislative LA. aide. So she's my, she's my right hand, you guys. <laughs> Any other questions? And then, if not, we're gonna we're gonna let Deborah go finish her walk. So I, I just and you can always always probably get a hold of Kaylee, her legislative aide, if you think of something afterwards. And I think you have town hall coming up too, don't you? We did it last weekend. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's rats. okay. We'll do it again. That's okay. <laughs> we do. Kaylee has, I have my constituent round tables where we open up the floor and sit down with uh, our constituents. I sit down with all three of the counties also as a round table. Um, Kaylee has set me up. We've done education round table, early learning round tables, healthcare round tables, um, environmental and climate change round tables. So, and they've got like 45, 25 to 45 to 50 people, Deb. So just stay in touch with Kaylee. And when we have those happening, we'll make sure we get it to you so you can share it with your constituents. Oh, that would be great, especially the yeah. climate, especially the climate. Yeah. Okay, folks. Last all right. Call for questions. Okay, my dear. Thank you. Take Thanks a break. <laughs> I will. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. And thank you, Kaylee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So um, we got to make sure we save the chat box because it's got Kaylee's um, contact info in there. And then I will get a hold of Jordan and find out what the scoop is on, on who we need to write to because right now the Ledgewa site isn't real clear about where it's at and what it's doing. So I will get with Jordan on that and then get back with you guys on that information. Yeah, just to point out, this is Dave. It looks like Kaylee already put the names of five people in the chat box uh -huh. that we could connect with. Carlisle, Billig, Rolfs, Leas, and Heck. Yeah, but I'll get I'll try to get Jordan to give me the actual email addresses so you don't have to hunt and pack if you don't know how to go into the to the yeah. Ledgewatt website and, and figure that out. So, when I um, tidy up the chat notes and send them and we post them, um, we'll get that stuff added to that. Um, before we post them, but we'll post all of them um, on MNCJ. Okay, so we really do need to to step behind both of these bills. I don't know, you know, for most of us, or at least for me, I have to go up against Erickson. Okay, so I'm gonna write him anyway. <laughs> but I'm also gonna ping on some of the some of the other senators that. Uh, and, and just like Liz to, to let her know, even though I'm not within her district and you can do that, ladies and gentlemen, you know, write to senators and representatives that are not in your district. I know some of them won't pay any attention, but some of them just might. Um, so do it anyway, <laughs> just as, just as, a, as a, a, a point of matter. But I'm one of those people who, again, I'm, I'm not proud about this at all, but I'm still new-ish at doing interaction and staying with bills and all. So I really appreciate um, that you would be sending us information of you know who to contact, what to do. I, I guess that's where I really feel the gift of community, just knowing others are doing this and knowing how to get help to, I mean, I'm going to get beyond the learner stage eventually, but only by doing it. Okay. So you can always, too, um, well, have, has anybody gone in and, and indicated to, the, to their representatives about either bill? Do you want me to run through that real quick? All right, so I'm, I'm seeing heads, heads nod. 
Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just point out that the links that are in the chat, people can click on those links right in the chat and comment on the bill right now and give a positive comment for it. Okay, so yeah, you can do that. So what your screen should eventually look like, you're gonna go into the Ledgewall website. Now, did you put in for the individual bill or just the general? The, the link that Kaylee has is for one of the bills in particular. I haven't looked at all the links you put up. Okay, so you go into the ledgewa.gov website right there. Then you go to bill information there we go. Now up here is where you put in the bill number. And for the HEAL Act, it's 5141. You tell it to search. And it's gonna bring up all of the information on where it's at and what's happening. Down here, executive committee, I think we looked at this already. And then you know, the, the language of the bills themselves. But what you want to do, and this is only going to your representatives and your senators. <clears throat> the committee is, committee's information is in a different area and I'll get that uh, information from Kaylee and uh, Jordan. But you go over here to comment on this bill, the green button, you click on it, then you go in and you type in your address. Oh, and you click on verify district. And then it should come up with your senators and representatives. Would you like a response to your comment? Yes or no. Deborah Cruz. Well, oops. Now, really important support and then whatever comment that you want to put in then you click on this and that's what Kaylee and Jordan are tracking because they'll get that notification and they start tracking the numbers on that so that's one of the first things you can do now, as far as the committees, it's a little more complicated. I don't know if you want me to get into that or not. Um, you can go to, she said energy, right? Was it the House Energy? Senate Energy. No, the HELAC. Yeah, he started in the House. Um, <clears throat> All right, this is a little more complicated, so I'm not gonna go into that right now. Anybody wants to get some more information on that, you can give me a call and I'll walk you through how to do some of that other stuff. Well, uh, Deb, this so, is Dave again. I yeah. Could. I'll turn on my camera here, sorry folks. Um, a short and easy way to do this, but it won't cover all these bills. And I just put this in the chat, is that the Earth Ministry has their legislative priorities page, yep. 2021 legislative priorities page. And it provides links uh, to exactly the page that you need to provide comments wherever it's at in the process. So you don't have to do all the searching to figure it out. And it doesn't have all the climate change related bills in it, but it's got a number of them. So if you save that link and check it frequently, you'll be kept pretty updated because I checked last meeting and they update that uh, every other day or so. So it'll keep you up to track on it. So it's kind of a shortcut. Heal Act is 5141 and the Strong Act is 
5373. So I put those numbers in the chat box for you so that you can go through yeah, I, I, and look them up. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm confused at, that you can keep doing this. I mean, As where it, at every stage is what Deborah was saying. At every stage, if it's in the environmental committee, right to the environmental committee. When it gets passed from there into the rules committee, right to the rules committee. When it gets passed from there into appropriations or if it goes to appropriations first, contact the appropriations committee. If it gets passed on to a different committee, say transportation committee, from the energy committee to the transportation committee, contact the transportation committee. So as, as many stages as you can go in and con that's on the committee level, that's not necessarily on your representatives and your, and your Senate levels because they'll track that separately. But any stage that it goes through committees and then it gets passed on to the opposite chamber, which is where we're at now because everything should be in its opposite chamber. <coughs> And the same thing, when they assign it to a committee, contact them, doesn't matter. So Deb, um, we're running into not too much time actually. It's okay, yep. But um, uh, can I ask a really quick favor? I think, I think I can show something. If you go into the, if you share the Washington legislator bill thing again, and go to 5141, just pull up its sheet that has the little, little um, tracking. Um, oh, you want to do the tracking? Yeah, show the tracking. Track this bill? Yeah, just track. Okay, so if we go into bill information, I'm going to put in 5141. Now, you can get over here, get email notifications which means you put in your email address. I think I may already be in this one. Submit. But there's one more thing I wanna, I, I think I wanna people to know about if that's okay. Um, if you go, just continue down on that bill's information page. It shows you what committees it's in and where it's gonna be heard. So down here in the house scheduled for executive session in the house environmental energy committee, uh, executive session scheduled, public hearings scheduled. So this tells you, you know, um, there, there are ways to keep track of them by going into this page too, but where they are. Um, sort and, of, yeah, but for, for the most part, sometimes yeah. there are some quirks in there. Yeah. Um, like uh, 5373, which is the strong act is a budget item now. So it's being processed a little bit differently. So I'll get that information from, from Kaylee as well. Kaylee yeah. or, or Jordan, mm -hmm. so that you know where to go and who to write. Yeah. Bob, did you have a question? Uh, I was only going to make a comment that those of us who live in Bellingham, especially the north end of Bellingham, the 42nd legislative district, we've got Doug Erickson who needs to yep. hear from all of us that think this is a good idea. And Sharon Shoemake could use our support. Right. She's one of the founders, the, one of the the co-sponsors of this bill. And you can see if you go into the bill here, you will see the sponsors. Okay, see so it says right there, it's in the Senate or it says uh, Senate Committee on Ways and Means. I don't know what that is. But these are the original sponsors. It'd be Saldana, Lovelet, Carl, Das, Fock, Hasagua, 
Hunt, Kaiser, Curterer, and on and on and on. Those are the sponsors. It's not necessarily everybody that's that's signed on to it. Well, I want to make sure that we have plenty of time for wrapping up tonight. Yep. So if there's any last comments before we move into kind of a, a summary section, um, now would be a good time to throw something in the chat or raise your hand like Bob did, I still is doing. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or um, any other quick comments. One thing I'll just throw out there too that I hope um, is by way of distilling what we've taken in tonight too, maybe obvious, but there are many points of entry to the things that we're discussing tonight. So there's no one right way to move things forward or to help trans you know, transform our state and, and make things better, but there are many ways and there are many good ways. So to the degree that any of us do any of those ways, that's all good and helpful and acceptable. So mm -hmm. uh, just keep in mind, it's not like right or wrong. You've got one choice and that's it. Um, or you got to do all of these things that we've discussed. But if you make a start, I think that's very helpful. And there, and there are many, many starting points, many entry points. Good point. So at, um, we are grateful for uh, having Deborah Lakanoff with us tonight and uh, Kaylee, her right hand and uh, it's been good to hear from them and I appreciate everybody here interacting with them. We wanna give uh, Jillian time a little bit to um, to bring things together a little bit uh, in a, by way of reflection. Uh, part of the, the interesting character of this group is that it's not only action and doing, but it's a lot of uh, contemplation and reflection and, and they both have their important vital place and transforming this world. So Jillian, would you please share with us a little bit? You're on mute, dear. You're muted. Thank you. Oh, I need all the help I can get with technology. Uh, Brian, thank you for helping us remember the multiplicity of actions uh, that are available to us. And I'm particularly struck that this evening we got to go on a walk with uh, Representative Lakanoff. That is, you know, one of the silver linings maybe of um, COVID that le leads us to Zoom that creates a particular form of community that we're in right now. And tonight's emphasis certainly was on legislation um, and it's all in the context of this multi-faith network. Um, and each of us and all of us together are devoted to sacred activism. So I wanna thank you, uh, Michael, for your opening and um, honoring the Baha'i New Year, uh, the spring equinox and uh, the beautiful prayer that you shared. And beginning our meetings this way helps us to remember that indeed we are a community, not just of activists, but of sacred activists honoring all faith traditions. And again, you know, what a gift to have uh, Representative Lakanoff with us in all her humanity and her enthusiasm and um, spirit of celebration. Uh, it's really, for me, so inspiring to be with a legislator who mm. walks her talk, literally, <laughs> um, as we get to walk with her and listen to her talk. And hopefully that really inspires each of us to follow in those footsteps in our own unique ways. Um, so it's spring of 2021. And we all know that 2020 was quite a whirlwind. Um, many emotions, unexpected challenges, and the effects of this time are actually far from over. So much we didn't clearly acknowledge has become more visible to us. And it's made it very clear that many of our structures, structures that have governed the world this country and our community are no longer functional or even desirable. 
And some of these bills that we've heard about tonight will hopefully change some of those structures so that there's more equity uh, in, in where funding is going. Um, the pandemic in many ways pulled the veil off of our eyes and it's asked us all to face systemic racism, violence, social and economic disparities and the profound desecration of this planet that we call home. We'll need new ways to relate to each other, to our governance, to the way we envision and embody our relationship to the natural world, to all beings and to our immediate environment. We continue to show up, honor the struggles and perhaps call in inspirational reminders like the ones that we heard tonight. Maybe when we feel a little bit despairing, we can call in Representative Lakanoff and just see her enthusiasm and her inspiration and really feel an embodied memory of this evening um, where we're together in community. There's another um, inspirational uh, poet who I'd like to call in right now, um, 13th century Persian poet, Rumi. He was a, an Islamic scholar and a Sufi mystic. And we've heard tonight from the Baha'i tradition, so now I'd like to bring in the Sufi tradition. And Rumi has quite a famous poem. It's short and I'd like to read it. Today, like every other day, we may wake up empty and afraid. Don't open the door to the study and begin reading. Take down a musical instrument. Let the beauty we love be what we do. There are a hundred ways to kneel and kiss the ground. So this line, let the beauty we love be what we do is the line that I would love for us to contemplate for a moment. We're given the charge tonight to email um, our representatives and our senators to stay very active in supporting these bills that we've heard about. And what inspires us to do that? Um, certainly being part of this community is our inspiration, but also being with the beauty that we love is another source of inspiration. So um, I'd like to sound the bell and give you just a couple of minutes to contemplate this part of our being together for you to tune in to this planet, your love for this planet, your love and care for all beings, and then also the action um, and actions that you might commit to take to tune into and honor this beauty and this love that you have for the planet and for this community. And then I'll sound the bell again. If it's easier for you to reflect closing your eyes, you're invited to do that. I know we're on Zoom. I know we're in two dimensions. It's not always easy to tune in energetically this way to a contemplative space, but I'll invite you to do that. And then when the bell sounds after a couple of minutes of reflection time, um, each of you is invited to unmute yourself, we'll be on gallery view, and just speak some words that may arise for you of motivation, inspiration. Um, maybe we'll, we'll end kind of with a collective sermon and remembering that the gift of your words is really a gift to all of us. So um, I'm going to sound the bowl now. We'll take a couple of minutes and invite some quiet time, some reflection time. I'll sound the bowl again, and then it's open for an ending. Um, anyone to share your reflections, your inspirations from this evening.
So I'm imagining this time as a, a choir and um, inviting each of us to unmute yourself as you're called and offer any words of inspiration, of commitment, of action to all of us knowing that we actually need to be inspired by each other. So I'm gonna mute myself now and invite anyone who wants to speak to unmute yourself. Go ahead, Marilyn. I just saw a um, video on a TED talk where I lead TED talks at the Senior Center for Jane Goodall talking about chimps. Mm -hmm. And um, she was very inspiring in telling us how it, at first the young people were so unhappy years ago when they said, look at the horrible world you're giving us, look at how you're damaging us. They were so depressed. And then she started a group called Roots and Shoots, starting about how the roots of the plants grow up and create shoots that can break right through walls. And she said, this is what you can do. She said, you can be the kind of people that make a difference in the world. And she has created roots and shoots all over the world, thousands of them. And these people are linking up on the computer together. And it's mostly young people, but people of any age can take part, but it's aimed for the young people. And she said, now when I go and see them, they are so thrilled, they're just glowing mm. because we're talking to people here and there and all over the world. And it's just so impressive. I just wanted to share it with all of you. If, if there's any way you can link up the young people where you are, I live in Bellingham, Washington, and I'm gonna to try to do it there. Sure. Have any of you heard of it before? Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Well, I'll go. I um, Jillian mentioned the enthusiasm of Representative Lakanoff enjoying watching her walk through Skagit County. I too was very moved by, I was, I found her enthusiasm very contagious. And uh, I was so excited to see her full of hope for moving forward this legislation that is full of loving promise after four years of hate. And, and it, uh, it just really moved my heart to see that we have um, so, so much promise moving forward. I felt very connected to her work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel that way whenever I see all of you too. It's, it's just feels so good to talk about what to do about this with people who are committed in their hearts to it. We have time for maybe about one minute, maybe another couple people can contribute to our choir. Go ahead, Judy. So I just wanna say that I particularly appreciated Linda Conroy's expressing her confusion about how to move forward in all of this. And all of us are confused. But it's so wonderful to have you all together in this confusion and still dedicated to moving forward. I love you guys. You're great. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Thank you. The, the two words that arose for me were, were gratitude. Again, gratitude for community and gratitude profound, ever-growing gratitude for living in such a beautiful part of the world. And from listening to our um, representative, uh, our speaker tonight, just uh, endurance, uh, staying in the race. Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. Bob. Um, go ahead. <laughs> um. I've been a psychologist, as some of you know, and Betsy knows. Uh, a psychologist named B.F. Skinner 
gave an interview back in the 1970s. And I don't know if this was words he made up, but he used these words anyway, uh, saying that there's no good reason you should care about future generations because you won't be here. But <laughs> woe be it to your culture if it has not taught you that you should care. That's great. Thank you for all of those that contributed to our finishing there and for Jillian for um, adding to the beauty of the evening, uh, multifaceted beauty of the evening. It's very wonderful. Um, we have an opportunity now to give uh, just a brief one minute each announcements time for our committee uh, leads and they'll maybe have something to add in the chat uh, so you can watch the chat box but we want to give um, in this order Julie from outreach Dave from spiritual activism and then Kathy from events just a minute to spotlight whatever they would like to spotlight in that minute um, both in the chat and just through a few words so um, I won't necessarily transition you you can just go in that order Julie then Dave then Kathy well, I'll be really brief, uh, just to say that we probably have 75 or more people representing 25 faith communities that participate in some way in our activities. And the outreach committee is looking at ways to um, give people, give the faith communities and faith community leadership and, and opportunities to form, more formally affiliate with us, different ways that people can do that. And so we meet monthly. Jessica Zimmerly will join us uh, on April 3rd, our second, our next meeting, uh, to look at opportunities to collaborate with them on outreach. It's really, it's good, good work. So that's all I'll say. And if you have questions, you can always ask me, or if you want to participate with us. And Thank you, Julie. For those of you who don't know Jessica, she's with uh, Earth Ministry. Right. Okay, this is Dave Ketter with the Spiritual Activism Committee, and we've got a group of five of us core people, uh, myself, Betsy, Diane, Sue, uh, Karen Delanius, and Judy Hopkinson, who have been meeting for almost a couple of months now, uh, getting the frameworks of the Spiritual Activism Committee done uh, together, and we've pretty much completed a document that includes uh, the vision, mission, and values and from that, the criteria that we're going to use to choose activities and projects. And from that, a list of activities and campaigns that the committee will be focusing on and some of the components. And a list of priorities you know, that, uh, within those activities. Uh, so those are ready to go to our leadership team to be discussed and approved, hopefully. Um, and then we'll be ready to really start, you know, hopefully, designing some campaigns in the not too distant future and bring more people on board to get down and get dirty and do the good work. So looking forward to doing that. Dave, if anyone's interested in finding out more, is there a, an email address you can share with them or a way to contact you? Learn more about the committee? Um, yeah, you can, I'll put that in the chat if, if you'd like. So, yeah, we won't be sharing any of our documents quite yet until they've been approved by the leadership team. Thank you, Dave and Kathy. Well, I'm part of the events committee. Most of us are here. I think all of us are here. And that includes Betsy and, boy, I'm going to get messed up here, it includes Betsy and Linda and Deb and Jillian and Brian and myself. That's six of us, right? So. Um, and we um, are mostly charged with what we do on the fourth Monday evening of, mon of the month, which is our monthly meetings. And so our next meeting will be Monday, April 26th. And if you just mark that on your calendar, at some point you will know what we're going to do. <laughs> um, we're not always really short. Um, so you might not know for like till 10 days beforehand, but if you mark the day, you know, we'll be here. So um, thank you all for coming and um and that's and if you have any ideas for uh, meetings you're certainly welcome to put them forward um and if you're here y'all have my address because it's on your zoom reservation 
So we'll Thank you, Kathy. We'll not meet again before Earth Day. So I hope you all are working on some kinds of projects for to celebrate Earth Day. Yeah. Can we say what our date for the next monthly meeting is so that we all can write it down? <laughs> Let's April, say that. April 26th. Judy, did you still have a question? You still have your hand up. OK. I just want to thank you, Deb, for pinch hitting and uh, walking us through those bills and orienting us to the website and kudos for yeah. us. Good for you, Deb. You did a great yeah. job tonight. Awesome. Thank you I so much. I just wish I was as smart as the other Deb. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think you're smart in so many good ways. <laughs> Plus, you got a good heart. That matters. Well, I think you can feel the collective gratitude here tonight uh, for everybody that participated and made this evening happen. So thanks to everybody. Um, I like that perspective that um, there, there are, there's a whole legacy, two decades, four decades of work that's already been going on. People have been laboring. And right now, there are things going on that we can be involved in. And um, so... Just uh, leave with that encouragement this evening. You're welcome to stay and chat in the chat box or listen to the chatter uh, through the actual two-dimensional boxes for a few minutes. Um, but otherwise, we wish you well and are grateful for your presence. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for Brian, attending, for everybody. Us through this. Thank you, Brian. Well, yeah, good job, good Brian. job. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Have a good evening. Good night. You Thanks, too. Dave. Good work. Thanks, Brian. Good to see you all, really. It's always good to see you guys.